فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل بالرباء الخير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his household, his companions, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them, to bless every one of us, to grant us every form of goodness, to open our doors, to help us in the dunya and in the akhirah. Amin. My brothers and sisters, today we are speaking of simple ways to happier days. You and I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and he asks us to do things in order for us to be happier people, more content than what we are. He asks us to actually lead our lives in a specific way so that we can succeed in the dunya and the akhirah. And if you check and you watch across the globe, you will find that those who do not believe and those who do as they please and lose themselves in the worldly pleasures are more depressed than those who believe and discipline themselves and have enjoyment within limits that are laid by the Almighty. Allah didn't say don't enjoy the world. Allah didn't say don't enjoy, but Allah says do it within limits and in a way that will bring about happiness rather than sadness. When we talk of a happy day, when we talk of goodness, when we talk of happiness, when we talk of a better day, better days rather than happy days, we use the term better days in the title. It starts not with the beginning of your day, but with the end of your previous day. The better day begins with the end of the previous day, not with the beginning of that particular day. By what? Remember, and I'm not joking with you, if the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has said something, it is automatically that within which there will be great wisdom and success of this world and the next. I'm speaking in the house of Allah. I'm speaking in this beautiful masjid. If I'm not mistaken, it is called the Jawatta Masjid. Am I right? Beautiful. My brothers, my sisters, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, if you have nothing constructive to do after Salat al-Isha, you should go to bed. If you adopt that in your lives, your life will change. It's not a cheap statement. It's not something minor. It's not a small thing. It is a major matter. If the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who we all claim to love and to adore, if we had to value his statement, we would say, if he has said, go to bed after Isha, unless you have something constructive to do, then definitely I need to go to bed. The problem is, are we ready to follow? Or do we just pay lip service? I love the Prophet, peace be upon him, but if he told me to go to bed, I don't want, I'm going to play games until midnight, until two, until three, and then I'll see what happens. I might stay awake all night and sleep when it's time for Salatul Fajr. You want to have a better day. How will you have a better day when it starts off without you having prayed for the sake of Allah? You haven't even prayed at the beginning of the day. So point number one, you want a better day you need to sleep early. Are we ready to adopt that? I see the brothers looking at me. Maybe you cannot see me because the microphone comes halfway through my face, right? Maybe I should tiptoe a little bit. Are we ready to go to bed early? Subhanallah. I will shorten my talk today so that we can go back and go to bed. See how your day is tomorrow. Subhanallah. Can I shorten my talk inshallah today? Keep it to 20 minutes. Oh, the brothers are saying, no, don't do that. But mind you, when I see the head wobbling, I don't know whether it is a yes or a no. Subhanallah. You know, when you, you, you just see someone do this and you wonder, what are they saying, yes or no? You know? May Allah make it easy. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, Wallahi. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, please value that statement. 
if you are really a true follower of the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will go to bed early. That is the only way that you would be able to ensure that you would have a better day the following morning. It starts off in the morning. So you read Salatul Isha with Jama'ah. If you have a few things that are constructive to do, you try and finish them as soon as you can. And you get to bed, you go to sleep. Subhanallah. A lot of the times when I speak about this, people just think, ah, he's just saying it, it's not easy. But you know, it is very easy. Go to sleep. Subhanallah. Go to bed. It's the statement of the messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him. So I'm sure we will do that. I promise you, I swear by Allah, it will change your life. Practice upon it and see what happens. Go to bed early. Subhanallah. If I close my speech now and I go away, I promise you that one practice is enough for you to change your day. It's enough. It's a very serious matter. But we take it lightly. We think it's okay. I can play games. I can waste my time. I can be on my phone for four hours, for five hours, and so on. That's not fair. My beloved brothers, my sisters, we need to realize it's Allah who teaches us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَا يَنطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ He does not utter words from his own whims and fancies. It is revelation inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam starts off by saying that. Thereafter, if you have gone to bed early, Doctors will tell you it is healthier to go to bed early. There is an English saying, early to bed and early to rise. I don't even need to end that saying, but what you need to know is it is beneficial for you. When Muhammad says that, people start doubting whether they should do it or not. But if the doctor were to tell you, listen, you have a heart condition, you have a problem, you have this, you have that, you need to sleep early, we will go to sleep early. We will go to bed. Okay, let's move on to the next point. If you went to bed early, you need to get up early. Automatically, your eye will open either for Salatul Fajr or before that. It's a gift of Allah. Early to bed, early to rise. There is a reason for you to rise. If your day does not start with prayer, you cannot expect to have a good day. Your day should definitely start with prayer because you were blessed to be given the opportunity to open your eyes by the Almighty, to be granted that life for one more day. So start it off with a prayer. Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhin nushur. All praise is due to the Almighty who has given me life after it was taken away temporarily for the night. Subhanallah. It's a small type of a death according to our teachings where you have been into a semi-death and now you were given life. Some people pass away in their death. If they started off by sleeping early after Salatul Isha and they were to pass away in their death, they would have a blessed death rather than a person who stayed awake for three quarters of the night committing sin. And if you take a careful look, subhanallah, you will realize that most sins are committed at night. You don't have a day club or an afternoon club or a morning club. They call it a night club. You realize that? They call it a night club. Where are you? I'm sleeping. Which is better? To be snoring or to be in the night club committing sin? People drink and they drink alcohol and they intoxicate themselves and they visit this and that and they have their addiction. What happens? They begin to maneuver like rodents at night. They come out when everyone else is going away. They join their type and their kind and those who are with them in the bad habit and they begin to engage in the bad habits. I promise you that is why the Prophet ﷺ says, Whoever reads Isha with Jama'ah and then Fajr, this morning prayer with Jama'ah, they will have a reward equivalent to a person having engaged in worship all night. Why? Because you saved yourself from sin. Subhanallah. If you make Isha with Jama'ah, you went to bed, you got up and made Fajr with Jama'ah, you will receive the reward of having engaged in Ibadah, in worship, all night because Allah protected you from sin. That's why 
In the same way, early morning, we hear the caller call, As-salatu khayrum minan naw. You heard that? Amazing call, right? Salah, prayer is better than sleep. I promise you, after Isha, sleep is better than sin. You follow? After Isha, sleep is better than committing a sin. Completely. There is no comparison between the two. But at the time of the morning prayer, we are being called to success. Listen to this call. Hayyal <laughs> al It means come to success. Who is calling you to success? Is it not Allah? Is it not your maker? Is that not the sunnah of the Prophet peace be upon him? Allah your maker is calling you to success that you are searching so desperately for and you are busy sleeping. How can that happen? You want a better day. You want a successful day. Listen to the caller who's calling you to success. If I ask you today, who wants to succeed? Everyone will put up their hands. But when Allah says, okay, come, we give you success. You are not there. Subhanallah. You see, Allah is saying, come to success. You're not there. But if someone asks you, do you want success? You say, yes, I want to succeed in life. And I want to succeed in the year after. In Sri Lanka, a lot of the people say, ask dua for me. Allah give us Jannah. Ah, oh, good. Mashallah. May Allah give you and me and all of us Jannah. Ameen. But are we going to try a little bit? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So that's why we say a day that commences without prayer is like a day that is chopped off. Chopped. May Allah bless you and grant you goodness and open your doors and mine too and that of every one of us. Ameen. It's beautiful. These steps to better days are so simple. They are small, they are little. But in actual fact, they make a change. Your entire life will change. You want success, I promise you. Discipline yourself. Learn to get up on time, to sleep on time. Have a timetable for a believer. A timetable is very important. That routine is absolutely important for you to succeed without that routine you are not going to succeed that's why allah has divided and spread out the prayers into five different categories of time you have early morning prayer so to ensure that you woke up there has to be benefit for it if the doctors tell you that you need to get up early morning to breathe the fresh oxygenated air we would get up to breathe to breathe how many of you get up to go to the gym? Subhanallah. We will go to the gym. But Allah says, you know what? Get up earlier or at the same time. If you go to your independent square here, you will find people walking and jogging. They even take their dogs with them for the jog. Am I right? For walk, you notice it. But I cannot walk on my own to Rabbul Alameen, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, Allahu Akbar, my maker, your maker, the Lord of the worlds who's telling me, never mind, we will give you something far better, far higher than the gym, than everything else. Come to success. Put your head on the ground at the time of the morning. Breathe the early morning air. See how you feel. Thank Allah. Engage in the remembrance of Allah. How many of us participate or engage in that which is required by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala known as tasbih. To praise Allah, to remember Allah. The dhikr of Allah. Dhikr means the remembrance of Allah. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. All praise is due to Allah. Glory be to Allah. Allah is the greatest. How many of us repeat those statements and words? They bring about calmness, contentment. They bring about goodness. We want to be protected from the devil. The hadith tells you, if you want to be protected from the devil, there are so many things that you can do. Many of us, we are affected by the devil. And we are 
harmed by the devil, by shaitan, by the jinn kind, and the protection was in our hands, but we didn't use it. When you go into the wildlife, and you go into the zoo, and you go to where the lions are, you will either watch them from behind a fence, or you will be in your vehicle, and they will tell you, do not lower your window. Don't open the windows because if you do that, you will be perhaps attacked. So when you see the lions come out and roaring at you in your face, at the glass, at the window, what happens? You feel secure because there's a glass between you and the monster. There's a glass. And you are told by the wardens, be careful, do not temper with these wild animals they might rip through your vehicle so there is a point beyond which you also start getting frightened right but you are in a car i tell you allah tells us to be careful of shaitan and the devil and the jinn kind more than we are careful about wild animals remain in your protection what is your protection there are three surahs at the end of the Quran. You repeat them three times each. You read an, a verse in Surah Al Baqarah known as Ayatul Kursi. You know the surah. It will take you 10 minutes or less. How long? 10 minutes or less. Every morning and every evening, no matter what condition you are in, you have wudu or no wudu. You are in the condition of ablution or not. You are praying or not in the case of a woman. You still will read those surahs because you need protection from shaitan more desperately than you would need from a wild animal in the zoo. How simple is it? Ayatul Kursi three times. These three surahs thrice each. Then there is a dua, a prayer that I want to share with you because we want to better our day. How am I going to have a better day when I didn't ask Allah to protect me at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day? A'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tamati min sharri ma khalaq. I seek refuge, I seek protection in Allah. And in the words of Allah, from all the bad that He has created. You repeat that thrice. Bismillah, in the name of Allah. Alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ard. With whose name nothing can harm on earth. Wala fis sama'i, nor in the skies. Wa huwa sami'ul alim. And indeed, He is all hearing, all knowing. Repeat that thrice as well. What you've done? You've put yourself into a metal armor. Nothing can harm you in terms of jinn kind or shaitan or the evil eye or black magic. It will not harm you because you have protected yourself completely and totally by the help of Allah. You want greater protection? I can teach you something else very quickly. Powerful protection where Allah will elevate your status, forgive your sins and give you a true protection against shaitan. There is a statement of praise of Allah that you repeat 100 times during the day. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him says, if you say that 100 times a day, it does not have to be all at once. It can be spaced out, no harm. But you say the following statement 100 times through the day and Allah will protect you completely and totally from shaitan, from the devil, from jinn kind, from so much of that which happens that is dirty from the unseen and from that which is seen. What is this blessed prayer? Do you know that nearly all of you know it off by heart, but you did not know that you need to re repeat it 100 times during the day, maybe 20 times after every prayer, maybe 50 times in the morning, 50 in the afternoon. You space it out how you want. But when the day ends, you should have read it 100 times. What is it? La ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadeer. And you can add if you want, yuhyi wa yumitu in the middle of it. There is none worthy of worship besides Allah. He is alone. No partner does he have. To him belongs entire kingdom. To him belongs all praise. He gives death or he gives life and death. And indeed he is all able. 
He is able to do everything. Subhanallah. That is the prayer. You repeat it 100 times and you have to have a blessed day. If you say it slowly and you concentrate, you will feel the elevation. Goodness in the calmness, in the contentment that you have. Try it out and I guarantee you, your life will change. The problem with us, we want a happy day. It starts in the toilet. May Allah forgive us. We get up, no dua. We get up, we rush. Where? I need to visit the loo, the bathroom. In other words, no dua when entering the loo. When you're entering the loo, we are Muslims. We say, may Allah protect us from the evil. Am I right? As you're entering the loo, you should try to enter with your left foot. That is the sunnah. When you're exiting it, you exit with your right foot and you say another prayer. You thank Allah for his mercy. You thank Allah for relieving you. Subhanallah. But what do we do? We just go in and out. Next thing we are in the shower. No Bismillah, no name of Allah. And you want a better day? Come on, come on. You're a believer. Your day starts in the name of Allah. Bismillah. As soon as your eye opens, just say Alhamdulillah. Oh Allah, I thank you. All praise is due to you. You gave me life. You actually gave me another day. I'm going to use this day in the best possible way, such that if it was my last day, I wouldn't regret it. Subhanallah. How beautiful is that? Look at the teachings that Allah has blessed us with. Amazing. Amazing. So will we definitely take this seriously? We want a happy day. We want a better day. We want success. But we're not prepared to follow what Rasulullah is saying. We watch another rich man. We look at a powerful person. We say, I want to be like this. But we don't realize, subhanallah, Allah is the one who gives contentment and happiness. How many people are wealthy, but they have no contentment? How many people are in authority, but they cannot sleep? And we are busy wishing that we were like them, not realizing that, you know what? Perhaps Allah will give you more than what he has given them in terms of contentment and happiness and so on in the short life of yours. So this is how you start your day. You start it with prayer. You start it with the remembrance of Allah. And it's not something difficult. It's very easy. Are you not prepared to spend 10 minutes with Allah praying early in the morning when you are prepared to spend one hour in the gym to show externally how strong you look when internally you are the weakest possible person if you want to gym the inside if you want to strengthen your bond with allah and become spiritually powerful you need to spend some time with allah just like you spend some time with the gym in fact it is more important to develop inside than outside and i'm not belittling any one of those but there is definitely a prioritization how many of you go to the gym today if you want a successful business they say you open a food place or a gym because people will eat 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 they gain weight 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 then they go to the gym and they want to lose 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 what the same weight 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 subhanallah so you either have a restaurant for them to gain the weight or you have a gym for them to lose the weight where is the middle path subhanallah it's a reality Come to the masjid, house of Allah. Learn the Prophet Sallallahu teachings. You want a better day. Control what you eat and control how much you eat. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet Sallallahu says, we are believers. We are believers. Definitely. When we eat, we take the name of Allah. We take the name of Allah, Bismillah. If you don't take the name of Allah, you're just going to munch the food. It's going to go in. You don't know where you're going to use the energy because you were not conscious of what went in. And after a while, it comes out. Subhanallah. And what happened? You enjoyed the meal. That's it. You enjoyed the meal. You were happy. You spent the money and you were okay. But you don't know whether it was healthy. You don't know whether it was spiritually beneficial. If you were to say the name of Allah, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. And then you were to put a morsel in the food. And you do not fill your belly to the degree that you are full such that you cannot even get up and walk. Sometimes we have a buffet. You know what's a buffet? where you pay a certain amount of food at a restaurant and thereafter they tell you you can take as much as you want from these places and they know roughly what you're going to eat people say 
Tonight we're going to the buffet. Don't eat today. Okay, now we are hungry. When you go there, as you sit down, they give you water, they give you drink, they give you juice. Why? So that when your belly is full, now you can't really eat much. Ah, it was worth it. So what the intelligent people do, they take the water, put it aside. They take the juice, put it aside. They take the drink, put it aside. Wait, we want the food, we want to eat. Then they take their plates and you watch. They will fill it and fill it and fill it and fill it. And they don't even think I paid so much. So now I am definitely going to make sure that every cent that I paid is taken in more than its value of the food. But if you're a mu'min, you understand and you realize, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. The hadith of the messenger, peace be upon him. If you really love him and you want to depict your love and you want to show how much you love his words, his method, and you truly believe that whatever he said was divine guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will never eat to your fill. Never. You have approximately one third of food, another third approximately of liquid, and you leave one third of air empty. That's what the Prophet says. If you really have to eat, you must make sure a third for solids, third for liquids, and one third empty. When you get up, you are healthy, you are energetic, you energize. I promise you, if you want a better day, eat less. Allahu Akbar. This is not from my pocket. I am telling you from what Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have taught you and I. If you want a better day, eat less. Even in Ramadan, if you get up for suhoor, the pre-dawn meal, which is known as suhoor, if you eat a lot, you will struggle through the day. You will be burping through the day. You have heartburn through the day. 10 o'clock already, your stomach is making noise it wants more and more because the enzymes were working throughout the morning and now you are hungry. But if you have a light meal early in the morning made up of dates and water and perhaps a little bit more than that, it will be almost evening and you still will not be hungry. Eat less if you want a better day. Eat less if you want a better day. Subhanallah. Cut down on the amount of food you eat and also look at the quality of food that you have. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, speaks of dates and water, Aisha radiallahu anha, she says, we were living in the prophetic home. You know what that means? It means we were with the most loved creature unto Allah. That's what it means. We were in the household of the highest of all messengers of Allah. That's what she is saying. We were living with the one whom Allah has granted the highest rank. But a whole month passed. We saw the moon and in our house, we only had water and dates. Another month passed. We saw the second moon. We only had water and dates. A third month passed. We saw the third moon and in our house was only water and dates. In huwa illa tamru wal ma. Indeed, what we ate was only dates and what we drank was just water. Does Allah not love the Prophet peace be upon him way beyond anyone and everyone else? Absolutely. I believe that. So why did Allah allow him to go through this? Because Allah wanted you and I to learn a lesson to say, having a better day, having happiness, having contentment is not connected to the how much food you have on the table, how much you're going to eat. No, it's connected to the gratitude of Allah. Thank Allah for whatever he has bestowed upon you. And remember, the staple food is perhaps healthier than eating junk. You cannot live on chocolates. You enjoy the chocolate now and again, but you cannot live on chocolates. The same way you cannot live on crisps and chips and fast foods every single day, day in, day out. You are actually eating unhealthy. You want a better day. You need to be concerned about your health. When you eat less, you will be much healthier. You will feel better. You feel energetic. When the prayer time comes, you are not lazy. Today, most of us are absolutely lazy. You know why? We slept late. We got up late. When you get up late and you have not read Salatul Fajr, the hadith clearly says, Shaitan urinates in your ears. Shaitan urinates in your ears. You got up, you didn't read Salatul Fajr. 
Go and clean your ears. Subhanallah. Your day cannot be good. You need to, you need to read that Salatul Fajr and fulfill it as soon as you wake up if you have missed it unintentionally. Whoever has slept over a prayer by mistake or has forgotten it by error, as soon as they remember it, they should fulfill it as qada, which means that which is missed the time, but I'm going to fill it and fulfill it now. May Allah forgive us. So we start off with the prayer. We understood the question of eating. You don't need to eat three times a day, five times a day, six times a day. There's nothing hard and fast in Islam to tell you how many times a day you should eat. You are allowed to have breakfast, lunch and supper. You are allowed to have that. But it doesn't mean that you need to eat so many times a day. I know of people who eat once a day, who eat twice a day. They might have a bit of breakfast and then five o'clock in the evening, they have a good meal and that's it. When you eat too late at night, again, you're going to have a bad next day. Because you ate too late at night. I mean, the time is eight o'clock, nine o'clock, and you're sitting there and you are not eating. You are munching. Subhanallah, munching as though you've never seen food before and you want to have a better next day. No, no, no. Let's ask Allah's forgiveness. We are not living in order to eat, but we are eating in order to live. That's the way a mu'min should be. We didn't come to this world to eat. But we are in this world, so we will eat. Allahu Akbar, a big difference between the two. Some, they live to eat, and others, they eat to live. MashaAllah. We are a balance between the two. We are a balance between the two. We will enjoy our food. We will thank Allah. I'm not saying don't have what is tasty, but I want to let you know something. Why is it that the doctors will tell you that everything that is very tasty to your taste buds is not healthy for you? Why did Allah do that for us? That which is sweet, sugar, they say, watch out. Chocolates, they say, watch out. Fries, they say, watch out. Fast foods, they say, watch out. But tasty, very tasty. Lot of cheese and this and that. They'll tell you, watch out for this, watch out for that. But when you start having boiled vegetables, they say, very healthy. Subhanallah. Boiled vegetables, they say, very healthy. When you have poached eggs, they'll say, oh, wow, that's extremely healthy. And so on. So look at how Allah works. When you have the fine white bread, they will tell you, be careful, it's not healthy. You start eating the bran and the brown bread and that which is slightly raw, they will tell you this is much healthier. How come? How come? Because what you like, you need to know, discipline yourself if you would like to have a better day. Let the discipline come. Be disciplined. In the same way, I'm disciplined about my timing. I need to have a beautiful day. I need to be disciplined about my eating. Try to eat at the same time every day. Not one day you eat at two o'clock, the next day three o'clock, the next day four o'clock, the next day five o'clock, and so on. Try to eat at a similar time. Your bodies are more complicated than computers. They get used to things. They get used to a routine. Allah wants you to have the routine. إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا <coughs> Indeed, salah is prescribed to the believers, prescribed upon fixed timings. That is what Allah is telling you. Why? He wants you definitely to plan your day. That's why Fajr is at the beginning of the day. The midday prayer is a beautiful break. <coughs> the afternoon prayer, the late, meaning the early evening prayer and the late night prayer. That's the timing. You have five prayers. It's beautiful timing. It's given to you as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want a better day, be concerned about the next prayer. How will you make it? Where will you do it? How will you fulfill it? If you are concerned about the next prayer, you will have the best day. Many of us are more concerned about the job, more concerned about worldly items. I'm not saying don't be concerned about worldly items, but Learn to start giving preference to that which will please Allah. Because that is when you will truly have a better day. 
if a, if a man was to tell you, son, come here, I have a job for you. Okay? I want you to work for me for 30 days. Or I want you to work for me. Okay? I'll give you your salary at the end of every month. And I'm going to give you 5,000 US dollars. Ah, mashallah. Mashallah. Some of us will say, where is the job? I don't mind going, starting today. Yes, you start today. When will you see your first salary? After how many days? After 30 days. You are so happy because the money is quite a lot. Who promised you? Your boss. Your boss. What did he tell you? Even if he told you this is a flight of stairs, go up and down all day. What will you do? You'll go up, come down. Go up, come down. It doesn't make sense to you, but you know after 30 days I'm going to get $5,000. You will go up, come down. Go up. As soon as he comes, you go up, come down. Go, because you, it might be silly and it might be a good job. Who knows? You are working hard based on the promise of a human being that he is going to give you something after 30 days. When 25 days pass, you start going up faster and down faster because you know, hey, five more days, right? And you are happy and you, and you are so excited because a man, a human being has promised you that after 30 days, you are going to get 5,000. And you are so, when the 29th day comes, you can already start planning what you're going to do. Am I right? I'm going to go here. I'm going to do that. I can get married. First 5,000 is okay. I can get married inshallah. I'm going to, wow. I'm so excited. I'm happy. Based on what is that happiness? The happiness is based on the promise of a human being to you that when you work for 30 whole days, how many hours we will give you something. We believe the promise of a human being and we work hard to get something after we have worked. But we don't believe the promise of Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who says you work hard, I will give you Jannah, Arduha samawat wal ardu u'iddat lil muttaqeen. You work hard, I will give you paradise that is prepared for the true believers. And subhanallah, it is more spacious than the earth and the heavens put together. So for the promise of a human, we get excited. For the promise of Allah, no excitement. Look at where we, we want a better day, right? We need to be so excited about this better day. Allah did not tell us to go up and down the stairs. No, Allah's promised us way more than $5,000. And Allah's promise... Allah says, when I promise, you can hold me to that promise. You can ask me about it. That's what Allah says in the Quran. When I promise you, you can ask me, oh Allah, you promised. You won't even need to ask. He's going to give it to you before you ask. You have Iman, work hard. We work hard for money. We don't work hard for Iman. This example I've given you is a powerful example. That of how we get excited because a person promised us. When your boss doesn't give your salary and delays it, we get sad. Sir, I ran up and down the stairs for one month. Sir, you are delaying. Sir, one week has passed. What to do, sir? Sir says, don't worry, it's coming. After one week, sir, another week has passed. Don't worry, it's coming. Allah will never do that to you. Impossible. Allah promised you, you know what? You work hard. You read your salah. You try your best to fulfill your dhikr. Go to bed early. Get up early. Watch how you eat. Watch how you talk to people. Be a good person. Try your best to cut out the sins that you are committing. And you will have the best days in this world. And I promise you that at the end, I'm going to give you Jannatul Firdaus, the paradise you are so waiting for. Your conviction with the promise of Allah as a believer should be way beyond your conviction with the promise of a human being to give you a salary at the end of the month. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us. May Allah protect us. You want a happy day? Learn to become a better person. How do you treat your folks, those who live with you? Do you smile at them? Do you make life easy for them? Do you talk to them? Do you address them with respect? Every single action of yours is written down by the angels. You will pay a price for it or you will earn a reward for it. Be careful. Your days are numbered. 
Your days are numbered. If you want a better day, make the lives of those living with you better. Allah will make sure that your day is better. Smile at them. Speak to them. Help them. Help around the house. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, helped around the house. He helped sometimes with the chores in the home. He helped sometimes with so many other things. The food, he assisted with the milking of the, 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 the sheep and the goats, etc. He brought the milk, he assisted, he helped, he served the food, he looked after, he helped clean sometimes. He didn't just sit there and say, I'm a man. He didn't look at those he lives with and swear them and laugh at them and mock at them. Not at all. Watch your words. If you want a happy life, a better day, you need to respect people. Even if it's your wife, your husband, your father, your mother-in-law, your daughter-in-law, your son-in-law, respect them and Allah will create people who respect you. You want a better day, learn to respect yourself. Learn to greet. You want to be given importance by Allah. There is a way to do it. If you want to be an important person in this dunya and in the akhirah, take a moment to give other people lots of importance. Look at someone, look at anyone, the rich, the poor, the dark, the light, and give them importance. Lot of importance. Greet them as though they are VVIPs. But the man is just a cleaner on the street. You look at him, good morning, sir. How are you? If he's a Muslim, Assalamu alaikum. My brother, how is your day? You know what? Whole day he will just smile. He'd say, hey, I met a man. He actually greeted, he actually asked me, how is my day? Oh, wow. Hey, he's going to smile. What happened? Allah will give you reason to smile your day too. Because Allah is watching. He is also a creature of Allah. You are a creature of Allah. He might not have been a Muslim, but what did you do? You made his day. You brightened up the day of others. Allah will brighten your whole life and your hereafter. The problem with us, we make the lives of others gloomy, gloomy, depressed. We swear, we shout, we scream, we yell, and we think that Allah is not watching. And we think we can get away with it. We might get away with it for a short time. You don't know what the future holds for you. A day might come when you will cry more tears than you made others cry. Why do that? You want a better day? Wipe off the tears of those who are crying because of you. Why should I make someone cry because of me? My son, my daughter, my mother, my father, my brother, my sister, whoever it may be, my husband, my wife. Why should I make them cry? For what? Learn to respect each other. Learn to say the best of words. You will have not just a better day, but a better life. Cut out sin. The vulgar words, the bad habits. Look, when you want a better day and you have sat with pornography during that day, your day will not be better. You might have had temporary pleasure, but the dopamine that's affecting your head, your mind and everything else, the addiction that comes thereafter is such, you become angry, you become frustrated, you become hurt, you start taking that anger out on someone in the home, you start venting on those who work for you. The Prophet ﷺ, those who worked for him, they bear witness. One example is Anas bin Malik radiallahu an. He says, خَدِمْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ عَشْرَ سِنِينَ فَمَا قَالَ لِيَ أُفٍ قَطُّ وَمَا قَالَ لِشَيْءٍ صَنَعْتُهُ لِمَا صَنَعْتَهُ He says, I served the messenger, peace be upon him, for ten years. Never did he make a noise or a sound to rebuke me. Never ever. And nor did he ever say, why did you do this? For anything that I did. That's the messenger you love. That's the messenger you follow. But when people work for you, you treat them like slaves. Abuse them. Some men sexually abuse their female staff and they think they can get away with it. And it's a topic that nobody discusses because they brush it under the carpet. Allah is watching. The price will be paid. Justice will be served by Allah. If you want a better day, stop the bad. Stop the habits. You will never get pleasure through haram. Through sin, you will never ever get pleasure. It is very short-lived. It is a fraud and it is fake. It's like someone selling you fake diamonds and you think that they are genuine. A big robber comes to you. You know he's a thief. And he tells you, I sell you the best diamond. Don't tell anyone. You look at it, you say, how much? He tells you $20 million. 
and you are a wealthy man you pay him 20 you take the diamond you are a fool you are a fool why fool you needed to bring people to check the diamond to see the diamond to make sure to ensure to whatever so much money and time and effort and energy you are investing in a stone in a stone wallahi my brothers and sisters don't be cheated the same way the same shaitan deceives us by trying to tell us that pornography and sin is going to bring you happiness adultery gambling Drugs is going to bring you happiness. You will be a strong, powerful man. It's not going to do any good for you. It is temporary. It will take the brightness of your day totally away. It is going to spoil your day. Your day will be dark. Your life will be dark. You may spend time in prison thereafter. You will be an embarrassment for yourself, let alone your family members. Why? Cut it out. The purity of your life is what will make your day much better. You have a pure day, your values, your morals. Allah is watching. Many of us have a split personality. In the home, we are lions. We are roaring. Everyone is frightened of us. People are walking on eggshells. Subhanallah, because of our presence in the home. And as soon as we go out, we have a broad smile. And we just look at people as though we are so calm and we try to help this one and help that one. Not at all. This is hypocrisy. Charity begins at home. The best of the people are those who are best in their houses. That is a declaration of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. These are beautiful gems of how to better your days. How to have a better day. I tell you, my brothers, my sisters, Physical exercise is absolutely important. Did you hear what I just said? No matter how old you are, male or female, make sure that you are physically fit. Get yourself a treadmill. Don't be lazy. Run, walk, swim, play sport within the boundaries of Islam. But you must do that. You know how good you feel when you have perhaps run for 45 minutes and sweated you feel so energized you feel healthy you feel good because you have taken care of the amana that allah gave you which is known as the body this body doesn't belong to you you must be worried about your weight that is normal you must be worried about your belly if it is starting to pop out you must be worried you must do something about it those sit-ups those press-ups that exercise that running it is definitely part of the contribution of protecting the amana and the trust that allah has entrusted you with which is known as the body you cannot waste your body you cannot be a lazy person because a muslim is never lazy laziness imagine the belly there was a, a woman who told her husband you know you better watch out your belly is popping out you are looking almost three months pregnant so the man looks at his wife and he says you know what look at your belly talk about your own belly why are you talking about mine so the woman says well hang on i'm about to be a mother so that's why my belly is popping out so the man says well what if you're going to be a mother automatically it means i'm going to be a father Those are excuses, cheap excuses. My son, my brother, my beloved uncle, my father. Be concerned about your weight. Don't let it waste. Sometimes you are naturally a big person. No problem. We are not saying it's bad, naturally. But if you are gaining weight because you're eating too much or because you're not exercising due to laziness, wallahi, you are answerable to Allah. Allah is going to question you. Don't think he's going to leave you. Don't think that. He's going to question you. Because then a time will come you cannot make salah. A time will come you cannot do anything. A time will come when there is nothing happening. A time will come when you cannot satisfy your spouse, which is also a great act of worship that we don't even speak about a lot of the times. A time will come when you're so unhealthy. Who wasted the body that Allah gave as an amana? You. If it happened due to hereditary reasons, hormonal reasons, some other reasons, etc. The sisters, sometimes they give birth once, twice. We keep them pregnant and keep them delivering like popcorn. Subhanallah. And then we complain, you're gaining weight. Well, I've given birth to seven of your children. Come on, come on, come on. Mashallah. May Allah grant them goodness. But having said that, even my sisters, we need to make sure that we engage in physical exercise where we sweat 
and we shed the fat that might be there. It is part and parcel of your duty as a Muslim to take care of your body. It doesn't mean that because I'm a Muslim, because I'm in hijab, because I'm in niqab, that I cannot exercise and burn whatever I have to burn in terms of calories, etc., etc. No, you must take pride in your health, what you eat and in the rest of what you are as a human being, because it's part of your duty. May Allah grant us goodness. You want a better day? Learn to forgive people. You have a spouse, you have family members. Don't be too hard. Don't be too harsh. Do not want it your way. That is very dangerous. You see, we are seated here, perhaps, how many people? A thousand, two thousand, Allah knows. I can tell you something, my beloved brothers and sisters. Every one of us thinks differently. Some of us might come close in our thinking, but we think differently. If we all had to be stubborn on what we like, we would have World War X by now. You cannot be stubborn. You have to learn to give and take. One day it's according to you, one day it's according to them. Be happy. Give it to others. Let them be happy. You have children, you have a wife. You have a husband if you're a woman. Subhanallah. And you know what? Let them have it their way sometimes. Let it be their way. It doesn't have to be your way all the time. The Prophet Muhammad he used to make sure that his wives were happy. Look at Safiya bint Huyay radiallahu anha and the other, the other wives of the Prophet Ummahatul Mu'mineen radiallahu anhunna jami'an. The Prophet وسلم, he has actually put his hand at one stage and his knee at another stage in order to help them get on to the back of an animal. And he has changed the horse because one of his wives complained that I don't want to sit on this horse. It's a little bit slow. I want to sit on the fast one. Imagine on a Sunday, you're going for a drive with your Corolla and your wife says, no, take out the Mercedes today. What will you do? Will you really roll it out? Mashallah. What is the Mercedes there for? Just to leave in the garage and to say, I have a Mercedes. You know, when we were young, the poor people, we used to put stickers at the back of our cars. My other car is a Porsche. <laughs> Mashallah, sticker. So when you're driving your little, you know, Corolla that's shaking on the road and you go to school and people are looking at you at the back, they say, my other car is a Porsche. Don't worry, it's in the garage. Subhanallah. Just to feel good. What's the point? Use it. May Allah bless you. Bless all of us. It should not bring about arrogance. If you want a better day, when Allah blesses you, turn to sujood. Read two units or two rak'at of prayer. More to thank Allah. Oh Allah, I had a good day. How many of us do that? Oh Allah, I had a very good day. I thank you. Give out charity. You want a better day? Give charity. Reach out to people. To smile is a charity. But give some money to someone. Quietly. Give it to someone. Few rupees. Few dollars here and there. It's not going to take you off. The mark of goodness. In fact, it is a sign of goodness. It will make you wealthier. Wealth has never depleted because of charity. Allah says we have never ever allowed someone to become bankrupt if they are charitable. Did you hear that? So make people's lives good. Reach out to people. Be a, be a person who sees that others are happy and you will have a happy day you will have a better day spend time with your family with your children look at your children smile tell them i love you i care for you and take them out do something with them spend a bit of time with them play a game with them kiss them the prophet sallallahu kissed al hasan ibn ali radiallahu an his grandsons and al aqra ibn habis was sitting near him he says how can you kiss these children how can you kiss them your grandchildren, I have 10. I didn't kiss even one of them. The Prophet says, Man la yarham la yurham. Whoever doesn't show mercy will not be shown mercy. You want mercy? Show mercy. Amazing. A kiss for your children is mercy. If a kiss for your child is mercy, imagine a kiss for your wife. Allahu Akbar. MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. May Allah bless us. May Allah open our doors. My beloved brothers and sisters, we all want better days. But I promise you, what I said today was very simple. But we don't want to practice upon it. We will say, good bayan. Good bayan. It was a good lecture. MashaAllah, lovely. But will we change? Will we really change? 
Do you really think that these messages will keep coming to us and we just hear them in from one ear, out from the other ear? In from one ear, out from the other ear? No, 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 no. It needs to go in the ear, get jammed in the middle, go up to the brain and do something about it, mashallah. Do something about it. We need to lead happier lives. Your better life is when you cut your sins and you increase your connection with Allah. As you increase your connection with Allah, you increase your connection with your family members. A person who is pious, the sign of piety shows in their character and conduct. Remember that. Those of you who read Salah five times a day, who read lots of Quran in the day, who make a lot of dhikr in the day, if your character, your attitude is not upon a high level, there is something wrong with your acts of worship, something major that is wrong. If you say five Salah and you swear, something's wrong with your Salah. Because Salah itself should stop you from immorality and evil. Indeed, prayer prohibits from, it automatically stops you from immorality and evil. So if you are praying and you are not stopped from immorality and evil, what is wrong? Something is wrong with your prayer. Go back, humble yourself, make your wudu correctly. Bring yourself to the ground for Allah. Read Quran. Control your temper. And that's the last point that I'm going to speak about today. Anger. Anger management. Anger is definitely from the devil. One day a young man came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and says, O oh Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, please give me some good advice. Awsini ya Rasul Allah. O oh Messenger, Give me good advice. Imagine if you were given the opportunity to go to a very pious person and you have a time to talk to this person and you say to them, you're looking at them, you're excited, you want something very good from them because you've heard they're a pious person and you say, please give me some good advice that I can take from you. What do you think they will say? Imagine if you had a chance to visit Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and to ask him, please give me some good advice for my life. What is the best advice you can give me? What do you think he will tell you? Well, I can tell you someone already did that. And what, what the Prophet peace be upon him told him has come to us. I'm sharing it with you today. You will be very surprised. Those of you who don't know. So the young man is looking, he says, Oh messenger, peace be upon him. Please give me some good advice. He said, La taghdab. That's it. How long did it take to say that? La taghdab. If I had to do that to you, you would think, who's this guy? You know what it means? La taghdab. What does it mean? Don't get angry. Control your temper. Don't get angry. He looked, he says, okay, give me some more advice. Because now he's excited. Because now he said, okay, I heard what he said. Don't get angry, okay? Don't get angry. I heard that. Let me ask for more. He says, give me more advice. The Prophet ﷺ looked at him and told him, La taghdab. Don't get angry. Imagine twice. Twice. Just that much. Two seconds. Less than one second. So he said, okay, I've heard this. Meaning in his mind, he's thinking, subhanAllah, let me ask for more. So he, he developed the courage to say one third time, Oh messenger, give me more advice. He's expecting to have a long paragraph bayan of one hour. No, not at all. No bayan. I told you at the beginning, if we only said one thing, it was enough. Go to sleep early. It's enough. We can go away. We've learned a lot. The Prophet says, don't get angry. He says, give me more advice. Don't get angry. Okay, give me even more advice. He says, do not get angry. Finished. Repeated it again. Repeated it again. Repeated it again. Subhanallah. What does that mean? It means your temper will destroy you. It will finish you up. It will break your day and it will destroy your life. Watch your temper. And temper is there in order for us to earn the pleasure of Allah by controlling it. Allah speaks about the people of Jannah. And Allah says, وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ those who suppress their anger and those who forgive people, they are the muhsineen, they are the ones who do good, for them shall be paradise. 
What did you do? Suppress, control your anger. My beloved teenagers who are here today, I know you are strong. I know you have muscle, mashallah. I know that you feel you are the biggest and the hottest. And I know you want everyone to look at you like you are very important. Because at this age of adolescence, you are bubbling and bursting with energies. And you think you are it, I, T, it. That's what you think you are. Watch out, control your temper. The most beloved unto Allah, when he was asked by a young man just like you, please give me advice. He said, don't get angry. What's your temper? Don't get angry. Don't get angry. Are you prepared to better your day and your week and your month and your year and your decade and your lifetime by controlling your temper? If you love the messenger, peace be upon him truly, you will make sure that you calm down completely for the sake of Allah. And for the sake of your own. And this advice is not just for the teenagers, but even for the adults. Nowadays, little babies are developing a temper. Have you noticed that? Young, two, three years, they are so angry. Where did they get it from? Either the TV or the others in the home. And you know what? It's not for the men alone. Young girls are developing a temper that is so bad, it's unbelievable. It doesn't suit you as a person. It doesn't suit me. Older women are doing the same thing. We're getting angry. We're venting. We are shouting. We are scolding. We are punching. We are getting angry. That anger will destroy you. You will regret and regret and regret. You will regret so many things that have happened in your life due to that anger. So that's my last piece of advice. My beloved brothers and sisters, do you realize one whole hour has come to an end? One whole hour has come to an end. So therefore, the little that we have spoken about today, may Allah help me to practice upon what I have said. Please take what I have said very seriously. Because if you really want to change the world, it starts with changing yourself. If you want to change yourself for the better, Allah promises you that you will have a better day. And like I said earlier, it goes on to the week and the month and the year and the decade. And before you know it, you have had such a good life. When people see you, they are proud of you. When your children look at you, they want to be like you. When others witness you, you are their role model. And that is how it should be. If we were all role models for one another, I promise you, we would be achieving great success. May Allah grant that to us. May Allah bless every one of us. May Allah bless the volunteers who are volunteering here. You see, they are all coming through at the moment, subhanAllah. These are people who have spent their time their energy, their effort so much in order to volunteer to ensure that programs of this nature are a great success. I want to extend my thanks to every one of you for attending because that's what makes this whole gathering meaningful. And I want to thank not only the trustees and the committee members and those who are associated with this beautiful Jawatta Masjid, but even the other Masajid that we have visited during our stay. And at the same time, I want to thank those of my brothers and sisters who have been praying for me without me knowing. And I pray for you that Allah bless you and grant you goodness. And those who are praying for humanity at large and we should be from amongst them. We are bleeding. We are bleeding because of what's happening to our Muslim brothers and sisters across the globe, be it in Iraq, be it in Libya, be it in Afghanistan, be it in Pakistan, be it in Yemen, be it in Syria, be it in Somalia, be it in Nigeria, wherever it is. There are so many places we can't even name them. We bleed for what is going on, but I promise you the change begins with you and I. The change begins with you and I. If you change and you become the best person in your home, you will definitely contribute to a better globe. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad subhanallahi wa bihamdih subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.